And welcome to the five best business deductions. There's a million of them, but we're only going to cover five today. And these are the best of the best, the tippy top. Uh, and this is all brought to you by Your Taxes Matter, a small boutique tax firm in Southern Orange County, uh, where we specialize in small business. So today I'm joined today uh, with uh, Kathy White. Oh, sorry, and that was Kathy. Over there, over there, Chris Basom. <laughs> And and I'll be uh, I'll be walking us through us, opening us up, uh, closing it out at the end, and and talking a little bit in the middle. Uh, so lots of things to cover today. But let's see, am I sharing my screen with you? Are you guys even seeing the presentation? There we go. Yes, I think we are. Yes, the five best business deductions. Uh, also brought to you by National Donut Day. That's right. Uh, June June 4th uh, is National Donut Day. You're running out of time, as I've been told uh, by Chris, uh, who is a, a frequent. No, wait, no, no, wait, no. Let's not let's not share any of that. Uh, apparently, donut shops generally close a little after lunch. So know that that you uh, this this webinar is a recording. So if you need to get to a donut shop right now to get that free donut, you can <laughs> come back. We'd love to have you live with us. But at the same time, I want to already be, be bringing you value two minutes in. You can get a free donut today. If you get nothing else out of today, oh. get free donut. OK, yeah. so, so so yes, brought to you by that. Uh, so so with the deductions, what makes them the best? I kind of joked earlier saying there are so many to cover, uh, but we only have time for these ones today. Uh, like I said earlier, we specialize in small business, so this is a very focused on business today. Uh, and, and what makes these particular deductions that we're going to talk about uh, today the best? Well, what if we could make a non-deductible into a deductible? So a, a something that we're not going to deduct uh, is now going to be a business deduction. And that will be a creative solution through payroll that Chris is going to share with us in a minute. Another deduction that we're going to talk about is how about money that you, you get to deduct, but you still keep? So I, I spent the money, I have the expense, but it's still my money. How awesome is that? Well, Kathy thinks it's super. So she's Absolutely. gonna help us help us understand a little bit more uh, in the form of 401k, a little profit sharing. I won't give it away. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll bring us back uh, to, to some things that are magically limited. Uh, and that's talking about, uh, you may have gotten the, you may have seen this on the newsletter. We, we advertise this a few different ways uh, as the uh, three martini lunch. Um, so meals and entertainment are, are back on the table stronger than ever. So I can't wait to tell you about that in just a little bit. Another deduction that we're going to talk about is the one that's just make believe. Uh, we kind of just the the IRS thought it up. Can I give them credit for it uh, or not? It's it's been in the code for a little bit now, uh, but it is very much just a hey, here you go. Thanks for showing up and being profitable. Uh, so Kathy's going to cover the make believe deduction, uh, and then we're going to follow it up or finish it up with Chris and the uh, personal expense uh, that we get to deduct. So so you're going to, some expenses that we have anyways, why not have them be business expenses? Uh, so that's going to be a little business travel uh, recap with Chris at the end. Uh, but with all of these things, uh, just like all things in tax, it depends on, on the following. Uh, if we all want to be able to take advantage of these deductions, if we want to take them to the maximum that we can, uh, we have to play by these rules. And, and these rules need to be followed uh, in, in kind of every sense of, of, the, of the way. Uh, the first one, all business income needs to go into business accounts. So this would obviously mean you have a business bank account. Uh, kind of skipped over that one. That's that's necessary as well. Uh, but yes, all business income needs to go to the same place. Uh, so instead of this being, uh, you know, generally in the first couple of years, it's messy. We want to get it clean as quickly as possible. Uh, so if we're getting paid from a particular vendor personally and then we incorporate, we make sure that they start sending it to the corp instead. And now it's going into the business bank account. It's very important in our defense of an audit, in that argument, in any of those things that we have separate um, or separations between things. So yes, all business income for us to do what we're going to talk about soon needs to be going into the business bank account, not the personal account. Uh, same same thought here, the next one here, all business expenses out of the business accounts. Uh, so this we see sometimes, oh, well, I used my personal credit card for that or I use uh, my personal account for that. You're breaking away that defense that we built 
that that we've worked so hard to to maintain this separate, very very unique thing all by itself. Not you. You know, we're we're working our best to do that. And by having those business expenses only come out of that business ex, uh, business account, we we solidify that. The last the the trifecta of these three is that then it gets recorded. You know, whether that's by you as the as the business owner. Uh, cooking the books, look, looking at looking at uh, month end every month, and and making sure everything's lining up, or you've made it to a point in your business, or you you recognized early on that that was not for you, and you've hired a bookkeeper, you have an accountant that that uh, puts those numbers together. All three of those things need to go together to even take one of what we're going to talk about in just a minute. So these are, these are the main rules we have to play by. Then every business owner, next column over. This one's a little bit different. Uh, gets paid for uh, gets paid for their ownership. So as owners, so this is this is um, owner distribution. This is making sure that uh, you're not just um, you know. Well, I don't necessarily want to go down that road because the very next one is pay someone to a function uh, to function as an officer. Now this could be the same person. Um, this could be could be the owner getting themselves on payroll. There's two ways you're going to take money out of your business, and that's going to be owner distribution, and then there's going to be payroll. So with this, this either means you're going to have a different person on payroll, or it's going to be you. So altogether, this means we are compensating ourselves for the work we're doing. Um, we're not just posting a loss. We're not just eating up all income with over and above expenses. If that's where your business is right now, this webinar is not going to go very far for you, uh, because what we're working on is making sure that we're using, we have a profitable business, and we're we're using our our advantage, our our expenses, the most advantageous way. And that's our final note here: to look for opportunities for business to exploit. So, so that's the job I think everybody wants to do. Everybody can check that box. But as far as the other ones, we need to make sure that we are acting in a certain order or, or uh, walking like a duck, talking like a duck, we must be a duck uh, to be a business to be able to take advantage of these deductions. So the first one we want to exploit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let Chris take it from here, making the non-deductible deductible. Okay, there we go. I can't hear you. Uh oh. I think you're on mute. What are we looking at? There you go. What are we looking at? We're looking at payroll. Yay. Okay. So it worked. So this is the one that we fight with uh, young business owners, new business owners. Uh, and by young, I don't mean chronologically. I mean, how long have they been in business? Okay. Uh, and specifically, we're talking here about um, not your payroll not payroll to you, but payroll to others. And we're talking here specifically when Conrad mentioned uh, deducting things that wouldn't be deductible. Wouldn't we all love to write off college for our kids? Wouldn't, mm -hmm. wouldn't we love that? Well, there is a way to do that. And the way to do that looks like this. The basic idea behind this one is, and this is backed by all kinds of other details. We're not gonna teach you tax law right now. What we're gonna do is show you how to exploit tax law. Okay, so with that, Business employees get paid via W-2. W-2 wages and expenses to those employees are deductible to the business. And employee activities benefit the business. So those are the three basic ideas behind this one. Uh, in, in this issue, in, the, in this particular deduction, what we're looking to document is establishing an individual as an employee. Now, that means that we have a... W-4 completed by them. We have an I-9 completed by them. These are these are forms that employees complete for employers. That we write a job description that the person who we're going to pay has a specific job, you know, and we can define it and explain it, and that they complete some kind of job application. Then we regularly compensate that employee per their position. Okay, so if this person works for us seasonally then seasonally, we compensate them. If they work for us year round, then year round, we compensate them. What we don't do is wait until December 30th and write a big check to them and give them a W-2. That's, that's not how employees get paid. And again, when we think about this, talk like a duck, walk like a duck, you must be a duck. 
look at any of these deductions from a reasonability standpoint. What does a reasonable person do in this situation? And anyone who works all year long and doesn't get paid and then takes a paycheck at the very end of the year, that's not reasonable. No. You know, would, yeah, would you work for someone all year long and then take a paycheck at the end of the year? No, of course no. you wouldn't. So operate like a reasonable person would. And you have a much better position to ever talk about, you know, any kind of conflict you might have with the IRS. Uh, interestingly, this last year, we had a lot of small business owners basically have to furlough employees. And those furloughed employees then could apply for unemployment. What's interesting is if those employees only got paid in December every year, and the way unemployment is calculated is by the quarters mm -hmm. in your quarterly payroll, and all that, guess mm -hmm. what? Wasn't much of an unemployment check, okay? Yeah. So there are actually good reasons to, to operate this way other than the audit. Okay, and, and I know that that's the big scare that we all have, the big fear we all have is being audited. We don't want to be audited. And if we are audited, we want to win the audit. We're going to show you how to win the audit and how to get all the other benefits you could get out of these things. Um, another one would be paid family leave. Another one would be SDI. You know, all those things are based on the quarterly payroll that these people receive from us as employees. So we want to pay them regularly and, and do it that way. Um, who qualifies for payroll expense? Well, anyone that we pay for services who would be considered an employee. We're not going to get into independent contractor versus employee in this webinar, um, but you know, in the future we will. We'll talk more about that. Uh, we reimburse them also for business expenses. In your taxes matters case, um, Conrad, you reimburse for use of personal use of cell phone. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so when people use their cell phone, you reimburse since all your employees are working from home. You reimburse for their internet, their home internet. Okay, which is how we're able to log in from home and do all this good stuff. So, all those expenses that that employee is receiving are tax free to them, deductible to the employer, because they're part of this whole expense of having an employee. Employee benefits, health insurance would be one of those. Um, educational reimbursement, up to fifty-two fifty a year, the employer can reimburse an employee for educational. But that's not what I'm talking about with writing off college. If that's all college costs, that'd be great. You know, <laughs> and there, there there are some college courses that can be paid for this way. But that's a benefit that would be deductible to the company and not taxable to the individual and completely deductible. Um, there's also a new thing in the CARES Act that deals with the repayment of student loans, that an employer can give money to an employee to repay part of their student loans. I mean, these, these things are fascinating, but again, employee, not an independent contractor, not kid I know, you know, but employee, okay? Um, so what do we do? Business logistics, we have regular payroll processed. We direct deposit the payroll of the employee to the employee's bank account. And then every year we issue them a W-2. What, what do they do on the employee side? They basically turn in a time card, right? If they're paid hourly, they're turning in a time card. If they're paid salary, they're just documenting the fact that they're working every pay period and they're getting their paycheck. They receive their regular payroll. They spend that money on whatever they want. Guess what they could spend it on? Room and board, college tuition. They could spend it on all that stuff. At the end of the year, they report that on a 1040, and they use the American Opportunity Credit to offset any income taxes that might be created by that income. Now, the funny part about this one is the de employee de or the dependent deduction that we normally get as taxpayers of you know, people who have dependents, that deduction is now a $500 credit in the current tax law, not much. That deduction is much more beneficial because of the things that go with who claims that deduction, like the American Opportunity Credit, like um, the stimulus payments that people received. You can only get those if you're filing your own tax return and you're independent, okay? So my dependents couldn't get it, and my income incomed me out of being able to use it. Same with the educational credits. I made too much money. I couldn't take that credit, but they could take that credit. They could get those, those stimulus payments. They could get all those other benefits, but we have to think about it. We got to plan for it. Um, and so with all that in mind, uh, I'm ready to toss to Kathy for the next big deduction. 
Uh, and I'm gonna change presenter. I'm trying to do that now, Kathy. I'm working real hard on it. <laughs> and you're on. All righty. Yes. I'm oh, hoping good. that you can see 401k <laughs> yes. profit sharing. Yay! Yes. So I am, this is, I'm going to move my camera just a little bit so I can look into your eyes. So <laughs> I'm excited to be talking about profit sharing and retirement plans because as Conrad said earlier, this is where we get to reduce our taxes, we get to write it off, and we actually get to keep the money, which is the only tax deduction we have where we get to keep the money. So let's walk through what we need to do in order to do that. So basic idea on retirement um, accounts is we have employees. As Chris had mentioned, we put people on payroll and they have time cards. They get you know, so they're an employee. As an employee, they can put money into a retirement plan and it is a deduction for the um, employer and it reduces the tax liability on the employee side. So if you're a business owner, it's like you get to deduct the money twice. So how much can you put away into retirement? Well, if you are under the age of 50, you can put 19,500 during this calendar year via payroll deductions. And if you're 50 and above, you can put up to 26,000 um, of payroll deductions into retirement. And with the right plan, you can also do another 25% of the payroll can go into a profit sharing plan. So um, as you can see, we can put a lot of money away into retirement. So what do we need to do in order to take advantage of the only deduction where you get to save the money is the business needs to establish a 401k and it needs to have a profit sharing component so that you have both the opportunity of the employee portion and the profit sharing portion. And then once it's been established, the employee needs to opt to have that payroll reduction for that year. And it does go by calendar year as how the contributions go in. And then the business also elects to fund the profit sharing. And this is the interesting part on the profit sharing part. We have until you file your tax return. So what does that mean? That's the business tax return. And you could have an extension and you would have until September of 2022 to file your 2021 tax return, which means you have until September 2022 to fund the profit sharing component of whatever's happening in the 2021 calendar year. So that gives us some flexibility and some planning opportunities. So who qualifies for a 401k plan and for profit sharing? It's any W-2 employee you can include in these plan rules. When you establish a 401k, when you establish a retirement plan, you get to, the business owner, gets to set up the business rules. So you get to decide who you're going to include and exclude. And there's lots of variables, which we're not going to go into all of the weeds and all of that. But if you're looking at a business that has a lot of young people, you could exclude those under 21. Um, so there's different um, or maybe they're short-term employees, you have a lot of turnover. So there's, there are some opportunities here. So um, you would wanna have a plan administrator for your plan, they do charge a fee, but when you charge a fee, you have such uh, a greater flexibility on the investments and the type of plan that you have. So it's always, uh, always wanna look at the cost benefit rules on all of those things. So I had said earlier, if you're under the age of 50, you can put uh, 19,500 away into retirement this year via payroll. Um, and then 50 and above, you have the opportunity to put away 26,000. So what do you do? As a business logistics, you want to establish the plan. And it's interesting, we do have some new rules and regulations on when those plans need to be established. So if this is something you're interested in, we should definitely have a chat about that. 
uh, then you need to be able to sign up your employees. Then the employees need to be aware of the plan so they can enroll in the plan. And then you also need to, Chris already talked about payroll. You want to have a, a payroll administrator who can actually report those deductions on the W-2 so that it's accounted for and reported properly via W-2. And then you make the election to match as an employer. So you have the employee component, you have the employer matching component, and you have a profit sharing component. So lots of flexibility, lots of opportunities. Um, and then you elect to fund the profit sharing at the end of the year. What does the employee need to do? Well, the employee has some responsibilities too. Not only do they need to be made aware that they can sign up for the plan, but then they actually need to sign up for the plan. So there needs to be an enrollment period. And uh, then you need to be able to monitor how much is actually being contributed. You don't want to be at the end of the year go, oh, shoot, I only contributed half as much as what I really wanted to. So need to monitor what those contributions are. Then if you're the employee, you, all, you want to convince the, the business to go ahead and match some of those deductions so that you get some free money. <laughs> And then you want to also convince the business to do some profit sharing. And then, of course, everybody eventually wants to retire because not everybody wants to work forever. Um, in fact, I haven't met anybody who wants to work forever. So everybody wants to retire. But what if you're not the business owner and you're the employee? Still take full advantage of the retirement plan if your employer is offering this plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, and goodness, if they actually match some of that contribution, you're leaving money on the table. So. I'm a huge proponent of retirement plans. I think they are uh, very efficient at reducing your overall tax liability and the only one where you get to keep the money that, uh, that you deduct. So they are pretty sweet. So let's see, I'm going to stop showing my screen and we are gonna go to, I believe, our tax wizard. That's me. <laughs> Uh, let's see. You guys got it. The three martini lunch. We've so now far. we've now talked about Chris's favorite deduction and Kathy's favorite deduction. You know, she always talks about retirement and how she's helped her her clients one day get to retire on that uh, that uh, Virgin Island uh, off of off of all those four hundred one k contributions. And Chris uh, loves talking about putting kids through college uh, through payroll. Uh, and I love martinis. Um, so perfect. <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel like this might have been forced upon me. I don't know if you guys are trying to tell me something. But anyways, uh, when I was was thinking about this one and how we were going to go over the three martini lunch um, and where, where this kind of comes from, it makes me think of Mad Men. And if you know us at the office, we, we love to watch uh, some Mad Men. And one episode is is back in the day this was always how work was done is you went out and you uh you know you you uh schmoozed the client and that's how you got the big the big account and and that's how you want it there's one episode where roger and uh don are are at lunch and they get back to the to the office and the elevator's out and they have to go up i don't know 20 30 flights of stairs and Roger ends up throwing up it's like the whole thing because that's what happens at a three martini lunch and all the things and this is how you know I'm a I'm an accountant is the thing that's going through my head is well at least it was deductible you know uh because back then it was that was that was how you did business uh but as we saw in 2018 and kind of leading up to that time uh meals and entertainment had kind of been under attack uh, the, the years I'm going to show you here, so we're not going to go too far back, is 2020, this last year that we all survived, and now uh, versus 2021 and 2022. And if you're already running through some of these numbers, you can see that times have changed. It's, uh, it's almost an homage to, to years past. Uh, you know, in 2020, uh, your entertainment, zero. You got to deduct nothing. Uh, the, the, we didn't want to have any fun, uh, and we definitely didn't want you to deduct it. Uh, in 2021 and 2022, already on the books, we are going to get to deduct 100%. When was the last time we got to do that? Never. Never. We have never gotten that much. So so this this is what uh, I, I know Chris has said it. I'm sure Kathy has said it too. Um, now I'm going to say it too. Tax code tends to encourage behavior. 
Uh, and this could be us trying to come back as a nation saying, hey, it's been rough and we definitely need to put some money back into meals and entertainment, the, the livelihood of this of this country. So with it, we're now saying, hey, make it happen. You know, spend money to make money. Let's boost this economy. Uh, entertainment's going to be 100 percent. Meals uh, have been mostly, you know, some of them used to be 100, then they got down to 50, some of them are zero, like the travel meals right underneath. Uh, in 2020, very limited. 2021, who cares? You're eating it, you're writing it off, 100%. Uh, whether you're whether you're on business travel or or you're, you know, meeting with a client. Um, with that, uh, depending on, you know, don't don't go too crazy. I did just say who cares, but we're going to talk about what what's necessary to do these things soon. But look at how that's changed. So again, this is this is uh, encouraging behavior of let's go out and let's go spend our money. Uh, parties for your employees, 100% deductible. If you weren't doing it before, you should be doing it because it still is. It didn't go up to 200%. Uh, your your taxes matter has a has a party every year. You you should definitely. It's 100% deductible. That one uh, we still got to do regardless. Uh, but now that that stayed in the code. So continue. If you, if you weren't taking advantage of that already, get to it. Um, you know, YOLO, I, I think is the uh, the phrase that the kids say. Uh, so so how do we do it? Uh, how do we document this deduction? <laughs> uh, we need to get a receipt. Well, you know, what did we pay? Uh, we need to use the business form of payment, going back to what we talked about earlier, having a business bank account. So we, if it wants, if it's going to be a business expense, you need to use business funds. And then what's the business purpose? You know, how did, how did, uh, how did this expense help the business? Um, so each, each one of these need to be tied to everything we want to deduct. So, so to break that down more here, let's look at what what kind of expenses we're actually talking about we're talking about going to laker games again we're talking about going to the to see the dodgers uh these stadiums are are opening back up uh you know sports theater or sports um centers uh i i know sports really well um sports centers are <laughs> are opening up and i know that sports fans have been dying to get back out there uh so so this is you know have box seats at the staples center again um, is it still the Staples Center? Did that change? No, it's still the Staples Center. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> you must have be having construction at your house, Chris. Is that why you keep muting? Yeah, okay. I keep muting. Yeah, <laughs> so I apologize. You get but some but yeah, I do. I do believe Conrad. It's it's no longer the Great Western Forum. Yes, oh. but but it is still the Staples Center. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and, and those that that you know all the all the concerts and in, in the Coachella. Uh, all got shut down this last year. Uh, it's all opening back up. So this is yet another thing. If you if you have clients that you know um, love getting out there and seeing seeing live music, now is the time to start thinking about those clients again and retain them. So there's your business purpose. Uh, but have you know a have a, have an awesome expense. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can you know when business is on a bagel, you can have business anytime. Um, you know, that was kind of an ode back to bagel bites. Pizza I don't know. Bagel. Pizza, yeah. pizza bagels. What yeah. was it? Pizza on a bagel. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, any, any time of the day, uh, you can be doing business. I mean, it, it's probably depends on your industry a little bit. Um, but with it, uh, you'd, you'd probably be expecting to see more dinner than breakfast unless that's not your, your shtick. Uh, so to move for that meals while traveling for business, we are traveling again. Uh, some of us, some of us never stopped, uh, but some of us are just getting back out there again. Uh, make sure you have that business card so that you can you can charge the business is 100 percent deductible. And those parties for employees, let's keep it going. You know, that that definitely qualifies a meals and inter entertainment expense. So what you do. So now we can actually look at an example of of how we would go through this. Uh, and it's basically, you know starting off by let's let's put it on the calendar uh we need an event to needs to be on your business calendar so actually have a business calendar that's your that's your first step um but with it look out let's look out to october 23rd uh when usc is going to be playing notre dame uh this could be it's plenty of time to plan for it uh you know get get the right right people together for the trip uh but with it we're looking at here's our event uh, taking a big client out or, um, you know, working on a, on a, I'm not going to get buried in an example right now. So we're just going to keep going. Um, so yeah, you take, have the, have the business purpose of going to see some football. Uh, so you need to list everyone that was involved in that event. Uh, you know, uh, specifically 
the boss, uh, the spouse, the client, uh, uh, prospect, a vendor, anything that can tie it to business to, again, solidify our expense here. Uh, we need to then list the business purpose. You now, was this just business promotion? Was this a, um, see, I'm just mixing my examples again. I was going to say buying a buying a banner at a at a local gym or something like that, but that's that's different. Um, you know, are you promoting your business with this client? Are you trying to develop or or uh, make that relationship stronger so for more business in the future? And then you need to use that company credit card or debit card or just business bank account um, to do it. So now it's going to be listed on our credit card statement. Uh, we're going to check that with with our bookkeeper. We're going to have that go through our QuickBooks. It's going to be in our records. We're going to keep track of all these things so that when it comes time to take that deduction, we can take it knowing that we've followed the right steps uh, to be to be in business and have it be a business expense. OK, and that takes us back to I believe Miss Kathy. OK, yes. Um, Gotcha. Okay, so now we have a very fun deduction, which is the qualified income deduction, which uh, is being referred to as make-believe deduction because <laughs> it actually came into the revenue code. It's called uh, back in December of 2017. So we've completed now three years with this new deduction, and it's been kind of interesting to see how this all comes to play. So what is this? It is actually a deduction for business owners that have pass-through entities. I have clients who refer to that pass-through as uh, phantom income. So if you have a business that is providing, uh, which is giving you a K-1, is providing you with some sort of phantom income, you are also eligible for this qualified business income deduction, which is up to 20% of whatever your profit is. So that's right. If you have $100,000 worth of profit, you get a $20,000 deduction just for having a business, which is um, you know, unheard of. So it is nice to have this additional deduction. And if you have a sizable profit, of course, it would be a sizable deduction. And if you have a loss, what happens to the deduction? You don't get a deduction if you have a loss. So we're all in business to make money. We want a profit. And then you also get, uh, will um, receive this deduction. And where is this deduction? It is actually on your individual tax return. So even though it's called a business deduction, you actually receive the deduction on your individual tax return. So there are um, a lot of different limiting factors uh, contingent upon income, maybe what kind of service, uh, what kind of business you're operating. So there are some limitations and uh, lots of calculations that go into this deduction. It's not just a hard and fast 20% deduction. And how is all of this calculated? Well, it's calculated on the worksheets that are included in the tax return. So what does this deduction do is, is it makes it very interesting when people ask the question, how should I be incorporated? How should, I, how should my entity be formed? It is no longer just a real snappy kind of quickie answer. It actually takes some, some planning, some strategy, some foresight. And so uh, if you have a business, if you're thinking about starting a business, this is definitely part of that conversation that needs to be included at this time. Um, there's, uh, let's see, what does our next slide say? So how do we maximize this deduction? There are different limitations to how we calculate this, and it's contingent on how much profit you have, how much salary and wages you run during the year, and then also how many assets are being depreciated on the return of the business. So that you have multiple things that are going into the calculation. And so we always wanna be optimizing those three factors. What are those three factors? Profit of the business, salary and wages, and the assets on your depreciation schedule. So the other thing that we wanna optimize how much are we going to put into our retirement plan? 
all of these are moving components that will affect the amount of the deduction that you receive on your individual tax return and your profit. So we need to really look at all of those different elements and maximize and optimize all of those so that you get the best deduction you can and the best tax results, which is why we exist. So what to do? All righty, so on the business, not only do you want to do all of the wonderful things that Chris and Conrad have already been talking about as far as making sure that you have, you're running your business like a business and you have your people on wages and salary uh, and you have a separate credit card and all of those wonderful things, but you also want to keep your eye on the fact that this deduction is on your individual tax return. So how can we optimize that when we take into fact the business and your individual return. And this also could qualify if you have rental properties. So if you have rental properties that are actually posting a profit, this deduction would actually be used um, on, on your return as well. So it's based on all of the different business metrics that we talked about to get the best results. Um, and then how it's calculated is once the business return is done, you receive the K-1 and all of the components and the information is contained on that K-1 that we then use on your individual return with those different worksheets. So I think I've already said the deduction is calculated on your 1040, um, and it can be restricted by the total amount of income that you're reporting on your individual tax return. Maybe you didn't pay yourself any salary and wages, so that may affect it as well. Maybe you, um, you don't have any assets. So all of these things we take into account when we're trying to optimize this particular deduction. So lots of opportunities for lots of planning. And uh, so call me. <laughs> I like how you worked in retirement into that one too. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so are we going to the OC tax dude? I think so. I think we are. Yeah. Can we hear me or am I quiet? Okay, good. I can hear um, you. So I just I just wanted to jump back. Are we looking at the what to do? Kathy's last slide again. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're looking at? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so interestingly, uh, and and this, Kathy brought up the fact that real estate endeavors can also be businesses. <clears throat> What's interesting is one of the ways that the QBID, the Qualified Business Income Deduction, works and one of the things it can impact is something that many of us got involved with investment-wise over the last couple of years. Anyone ever heard of Rich Uncle, the, the Rich Uncle investments where people were buying into apartment complex REITs and those REITs oh, yeah. uh, qualified for that 20% business deduction? Mm -hmm. Obviously, at the time that this tax law was written, and the president who signed it was a big real estate investor, a very pro real estate guy. So somehow real estate became a business uh, and just buying a REIT, which is nothing more than buying a mutual fund that owns mm -hmm. real estate as opposed to a mutual fund that owns stock and other companies. That became and made you into a business owner and allowed you to get a 20% deduction on the profits being paid out to you in the REIT. I have a couple of clients who are big REIT investors, heavy mm -hmm. REIT investors, mm -hmm. and they've got 30 or $40,000 of REIT income. All of a sudden, this comes into the code, and in 2018, they got a 20% make-believe deduction on that 20 or 30 or $40,000 worth of business income. Not so it's bad. fascinating. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> some of this stuff comes out of left field, and yeah. you know it it can ripple through your whole tax return um the idea of reducing your uh income you know because income limits the qbi deduction right so if your income gets too high you don't get the business income deduction the, the qbid but if you were to pay out a bunch of salary through payroll to employees and then those employees turned around and put that money into profit sharing and, and 401k plans. Now, all of a sudden, it all crashes together onto a personal tax return, and we see a reduction of income, which allows for an increase in the QBID just because. You know, so, so when we talk about these things aren't 
cut and dry, these things aren't simple to calculate. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about all the different ways these things interplay with each other. And this last one is probably my favorite deduction of the whole world because this is all about converting personal expenses into business expenses. You know, and everyone wants to do that. Everyone loves doing that. Um, so let's talk about business travel, okay? And we're gonna talk about how you can write off your vacation, an expense you're gonna have anyway. This all is under uh, code section 162 again. The basic idea is travel for business is deductible. We get to write off travel when that travel is business related. Now, what does travel include? Well, it includes airfare, hotels, meals, local costs like local travel, you know, which could be an Uber, could be a taxi, could be rail, you know, travel, could, could be all kinds of different things. But again, it has to have a business purpose. The purpose of the travel has to have a business purpose. Read business benefit when we say business purpose. So let's go to Chicago next week. And because we get to work from anywhere, okay, while I'm in Chicago, I'm logging in on my computer and I'm doing client interviews and I'm doing my work. Is my trip to Chicago deductible? No because my travel didn't determine my work. You know, I could do that work from my study, which is what I'm doing. So I can't just travel and write that off because I'm working and I'm working all the time. The travel has to have something to do with the work, it has to have something to do with what you're doing. So the, the questions come down to here, you know, the same types of things that we have to do with meals and entertainment, we've got to receipt it. What did I pay for? What was that expense for? Then I've got to use a business form of payment. So I can't put this, you know, put a bunch of expenses on my personal credit cards and then try to write it off of my business. That doesn't work that way. Um, and I'll tell you about that one in a second. But then the third is there has to be a business purpose. How did the expense of this business travel benefit the business? What was the purpose of going there? And the purpose could be a number of things. I could go there to visit a vendor. I could go there to negotiate a better deal with a vendor. I could do it to go, go meet up with a client. I could do it to attend a conference. You know, there could be a number of reasons that I had to do that travel for that purpose. And, and that travel, my airfare, my hotel, all, all the things related to my travel became deductible to me as soon as I did all these three things. And these are the three things every time for everything. We want to receive it. We want to use a business form of payment. We've got to have a business purpose. Um, so what qualifies for this expense? Air, air rail, bus, lo local travel, travel meals. Okay, normally if I just go grab uh, a nice dinner, you know, and want to write that off, uh, I can't because I'm just buying myself dinner. You know, I'm buying myself dinner, I'm going to eat dinner anyway, right? But if I'm out of town, what, what do I get to do? I get to have that nice meal, I get to write it off because I'm traveling, I'm out of town, okay? Um, hotel accommodations. You know, this is this is why, you know, business travel, business uh, airfares, business hotels, uh, they charge a little extra. You pay a little more because the people providing it know you're going to write it off anyway. How about dry cleaning? Do I get to write off my weekly dry cleaning bill, which has fallen to almost nothing now that I'm working out of my house? Um, <laughs> no, no, I don't get to do that. But if I dry clean on the road... And I knew a guy who did this. He 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 saved up all of his dry cleaning, and then he would tr take a business trip, and he would put it all into the dry cleaner while he was gone. Now, if you use the hotel dry cleaner, you're going to pay three times as much. All right, he didn't do that. He used the local. There used to be one hour martinize. Anyone anyone ever heard of that? One hour martinizing, um, and he would travel to the San Diego. He would be spending the night. He would go to one hour Martinize, pay the same price as he would pay at home, but he would do it all in a town a town, while he was business traveling. Oh, no. And that became a business deduction for him. That's a little too much hassle for me. <laughs> but Very but clever. De yeah, but depending on, on how committed you are to this stuff. How about travel entertainment? Well, gosh, who would go to New York and not go to a show? 
who would go to Vegas and not go to a show, right? That's that's one of the reasons you go. So what you make sure to do is tie that entertainment to the business somehow. If I'm going to travel to Vegas to meet with a potential new client, I want to take that client to the show. Now I'm writing off both tickets or all four tickets, depending on, on what's happening there. And I'm spending money on a show, but I'm writing it off. All right. And it's all part of the code. It's all legitimate. It's all real. So what do I have to do? Well, documentation is the key. And we talk about documentation in almost every one of these examples. The event needs to be on my business calendar. I need to list who is involved in the event to prove my business purpose. Okay. And then I need to state what my business purpose is. You know, was it promotion? Was it retention? Was it vendor negotiation? Was it you know, education, why did I go do this thing, okay? And then I need to use a company form of payment, debit or credit card to pay for it. Um, the example, uh, take a sales trip to the Bay Area in October of 2021. Now, I'm gonna go, I'm the, I'm the business CFO and the key salesperson, but I'm also gonna bring my business CEO, who is my key operations person. By the way, who does that happen to be? Well, if I've got a small corporation, I've got it listed on my statement of information with the state of California. I happen to be the CFO. The person I live with, who happens to also be the person I'm married to, might be the company CEO. There was a, a big conversation about this back in the 80s and 90s, where we talked about people dragging along their spouses and trying to write off their business travel. Well, if you're an employee of a company and you drag along your spouse and you try to write off their business travel too, not really liked all that much by the IRS. But if this is my spouse who's listed as one of my business officers and also happens to be on my payroll and involved in my, my 401k and profit sharing plan, hard to deny that they're involved in the business at that point. So again, I'm documenting it. I'm making it all real. What was the trip for? Business promo and development. And it's all listed on my business credit card statement. You know, I've got all my, my receipts and everything else is all documented there. So now I've written off a business trip to the Bay Area. Interestingly, Conrad, that uh, USC Notre Dame game coming up on mm -hmm. October 23rd, that's mm -hmm. actually in South Bend this year. Oh. Now, if that becomes a business entertainment trip, I now have airfare. Mm -hmm. I now have hotel. Okay. I now have the hot dogs at the stadium. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and the $42 beers, right? All, mm -hmm. the, all that stuff I have to pay for. All of that becomes a business travel trip if I can justify a business reason to be there. Okay, so that's how we want to start thinking about this stuff. Now, you've got in your um, somewhere on that panel of all those little things that are listed over there with where you can oh, post right, a yeah. question or you can do it. Um, <laughs> you, you've also got <laughs> under documents, you've got a, a worksheet that basically is just a one pager, it's a PDF, a one pager of questions to ask yourself about all these topics. You know, and that last one's all about business travel. And what we wanna do, if we're going to be going somewhere this year, let's try to find a business reason to be going there. I have clients in every state of the country, almost. So almost anywhere I'm gonna go, I have a client who lives there. So what I always want to do, if I'm going to do that, is I want to make sure to email beforehand, arrange to meet them, buy them a nice meal, talk about business, really talk about business, maybe have them invite one of their friends. So now I've got a prospective new client yeah, that we're cool. talking to. Okay. I, I look to see, I mean, Kathy, how many times do they hold tax uh, seminars in major cities in the country? Oh, all around. All the time. Yeah. All the time. So I want to look for a tax conference that I can attend as well. I want to look for reasons to be there, okay, and business reasons to be there. And then I document that, document my expenses, and I, and I take my trip. Now, let's say I have two small children. Let's say it's the CFO, the CEO, and two small children. You know, we're all going to fly. We're all going to stay in a hotel and all this. Well, as far as the hotel goes, kids stay free in, in, in an adult's room. So there is no deduction. There's no reduction of the hotel bill. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is a reduction of airfare. I'm going to pay for the kids' tickets with a personal credit card. I'm going to pay for the adults' tickets with a business credit card. 
that's the way the IRS would like to see that. And if I do that in advance of them asking me to do that in an audit, then it's harder for them to deny the adult travel, you know, mm -hmm. the adult hotel. You know? so, so again, think about it like a reasonable person. If you wouldn't submit this for reimbursement to your boss, don't <laughs> have your business do it, okay? Be reasonable about it. And, and that goes to the other question here about, you know, if I do accidentally use a personal credit card, not a business credit card to pay for something, how do I get the business to pay for it? reimbursement ah magic there's a there's a magic out thank you kathy that's all i have to do instead of at the end of the year saying oh yeah but i had a lot of personal expenses that i want to write off in the business you know so i'm just going to throw a number at you Nah, business accounting is a closed <laughs> system it's a closed system on purpose money comes in money goes out whatever's left over is profit so when i have that personal expense on a or a business expense on a personal form of payment I submit a reimbursement request, just like I would if I worked for someone else. And I put it on a form and I attach my receipt and I explain what I did and I tell how much it cost. And then the business writes me a check to reimburse me for that expense. And I write off that expense in the category that it goes in my corporate books. Okay. And if I do that every quarter, if I do that twice a year, best would be monthly. But if I do that, now I've once again even done it wrong, but then fixed it. I fixed it by reimbursing myself the expense. The reimbursement deductible to the company, not taxable to me, so I'm all set to go. Okay. There's there's so many great ways to do this stuff if we'll take the moment to do it. You know, take the moment to think about it and do it. Yeah. Yep. So so with that, let me toss it back to you, Mr. Tax Wizard. I mean, I think Bring you already did it. I think Bring we're us home. done. <laughs> I, I, yeah, we're all done. Uh, here we go. I'll take it over here. Yeah. So, so in in a summary, in a recap, uh, you know, we we looked at these different deductions and what made them best. We converted non-deductible into the deductible with our payroll. Uh, we we explored additional things we can do with our payroll. Questions about that? Let us, you know, reach out to us. We are available. Um, you, we talked about the money that you get to keep and deduct at the same time. Uh, let's let's continue to look at our options to be able to max fund the 401k and increase our our payroll so that we can increase the amount of 25% of that profit sharing portion we can do. Um, right now, meals and entertainment are temporarily unlimited, unlimited power. So go crazy, go go support some some local um, small business that has been suffering through all of this. You know, even if um, you want to still eat out, uh, take it to go. Uh, it's it can still be a you know, hey hey, make it part of your office party. Uh, let you know uh, cater for your office party at your at your favorite local restaurant. It uh, would be much appreciated right now. Um, you know, I, the make believe deduction I think is great because we really we really expanded on that. That although it seems like it came out of nowhere, it is very meticulously accounted for and depends on so many different things. So another conversation you want to have with your CSM to make sure that we're making the most of it, make sure we have enough payroll so that we can uh, not be limited in the in the 20% that we get to deduct. There's so many ins and outs of it takes planning, takes conversation. And then the last one that, that Chris uh, loves talking about, and it said, hey, this is his favorite. I thought it was putting us through college uh, and writing it off, but <laughs> no, this is it. Uh, business travel. Okay, now it all makes what? sense. What? Uh, convert, you know, convert those those personal business uh, ex or uh, travel expenses to be business expenses is all in how you tell the story. Um, so, so with that, like all things, what makes it work? Planning documentation, execution, uh, and in that order. Uh, a lot of the times we put execution up front because we just want to get stuff done. Uh, and then we sh shoot ourselves in the foot. So like all things, let's, let's look at, you know, some of the things we talked about today are new, like the meals and entertainment, 100% deductible. That's new this year and next year. Other things have been in the code for a long time. So, you know, this all just takes into account where you're at at this time. Because also keep that in mind. I've got little kids now. Those kids will grow up. Those kids will go to college. Those kids will have other expenses. And it's the planning I do now that helps me out down the line. 
But if now fast forward 10 years, I haven't changed the way I'm operating and my expenses are different, my life is different, then I'm going to be in trouble. So always make a plan, work the plan, uh, and then change the plan, you know, update the plan. So this is, this is a circle. This is the circle of life. Uh, and then what doesn't work? Uh, being unrealistic, being unreasonable, being unprepared, being undocumented. And that goes back to always with, with all things, especially with business, the IRS is always going to look for profit motive and they're always going to look for what is reasonable. Does it make sense? I always love using, using that example of, okay, so you made 20 bucks off a client. Did you buy them a bottle of Dom Perignon? Probably not. That's not a good thank you gift uh, for a for a twenty dollar uh, profit. But say you just uh, sold their multi million dollar home, I think you might want to give them more than one bottle. Uh, possibly could 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 be in the in the cards. Could be a case. So, yeah. Oh, it could be a case. So always think about what's reasonable, what's realistic, because that's what it comes down to. We can we can follow the code, we can do all these things, but if we didn't document if we didn't uh prepare ourselves for this if we if we weren't realistic with any of these numbers then it doesn't matter the irs is going to come down hard and disallow a bunch of stuff and we're going to be in big trouble and it's going to be a nightmare so make sure that you operate the way that is necessary to take advantage of these things and not have this come back and bite us in the butt later <laughs> so let's plan it out and let's go get some donuts huh you got you got a little bit of time. That's uh that's it for for today's meeting. I think we're right on time. Oh, we're out of time. No time for questions. There's always next time. Uh, the next topic that we're looking at, and I'll leave this up up to uh, responses from from all of you nice people uh, on our social media or, or email us and let us know if if you're you're interested in one more than the other. This was the five best deductions. We're playing with the idea of the five worst deductions. So we've told you what to do. It's probably beneficial to tell you what not to do, as well as uh, the other the other topic we're kind of debating is also what money moves, what what positions can you you make or take at this time in this time of change. Um, you know, is that uh, Chris has been bringing up one where there's now a company that helps build a shed on a, an extra piece of land behind you and rent it out. And in California, we're all about having having renters and, and having way overpriced rent. So that could be a, a possible avenue. There's a, there's a lot of things like that, you know, uh, sprouting up everywhere because in strife comes, you know, is great opportunity as well. So so be be paying attention. We're we're between the two, either what not to do or hey, if you're feeling crazy. Let's get crazy. <laughs> let's let's go nuts. Uh, so yeah, let us let us know. Uh, thanks for joining us today and, and giving us an hour of your time. I, I hope that you took something uh, valuable from this and, and that you're going to use at least one of these uh, five best deductions or at least uh, communicate with us as to how we can help you take advantage of one of these. And if anything else, uh, just go go get a donut. It's National Donut Day. Okay. <laughs> Hi everybody. Oh, out. See you next time.